1 Corinthians 6.18 Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. When you tell lies, they don't affect your body. They have no impact on your body, but they can affect your spirit because it is a sin. If you commit other sins, even if you worship idols, you are only affecting yourself spiritually. But if you commit sexual immorality, this is the one only sin that will affect the body and the spirit. We have been saying this many times, but many Christians are still finding it very difficult to run from it. This sin has become what they cannot say no to because the devil makes them see pleasure instead of consequences. If you commit sexual sin in secret, you are placing yourself under a series of problems that you will find hard to deal with. I have said this many times and I will continue to say it. When you sleep with people to whom you are not married, you are joining yourself with them physically and spiritually. You may be seeing sex, but it is a spiritual connection. Why would you want to join yourself with people you have no idea the kind of problems they are facing in their lives? Compare the pleasure you enjoy for a few minutes with the problems that will be there for a long time. Do you think you are deceiving God when you commit this sin secretly? Do you think that you are smart enough that you do not commit this sin openly? You may think that this may be the skeleton in your cupboard, but one day the skeleton will walk out of the cupboard and everyone will see it. Don't deceive yourself. Your sins may be secret to others, but have you forgotten that God sees everything? It is the lack of fear of God in you that will make you commit sexual immorality in secret. It is when you don't revere God that you will commit this sin in secret. Are you committing this sin in secret and thinking God is not seeing you? Are you still sinning and then thinking God cannot see it or no one can see it? Have you forgotten what the scriptures say, that all things done in darkness shall be revealed? Light will come and all your secret sin will be seen by everyone. Luke 8, 17 KJV For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall be not known and come abroad. Tell me, if God can see what you are doing in secret, who are you deceiving? Galatians 6, 7 KJV Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whosoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You cannot deceive God. You can only deceive yourself. Sexual morality is what society is having a hard time dealing with today. You will see neighbors committing sexual immorality and they don't want others to know about it. People are committing this sin and not wanting others to know about it. The sin will bring shame. It doesn't matter how long you've been keeping it. It doesn't matter how discreet you've been about it. It will come to light someday and the whole world will see it. You cannot hide it forever. And even if you succeed in hiding it till death, God, who will judge you, has been seeing it. You need to change. You cannot continue like this. If heaven is your ultimate goal, if you want to see Jesus and be with him, you will not consider this sin. Let's be honest and let's be true. We all make mistakes, but you can repent and ask for forgiveness for that sin. You don't have to live in that sin and wallow in it. Repent, turn away from it. God is willing to forgive. God is the only one who can clear the skeletons in your closet. Listen, it doesn't matter how many skeletons you have. God can forgive you. But I encourage you today to turn away from sexual immorality. 10 minutes of pleasure is not worth the consequences of those sins. You need to stand on Christ. You need to be on Christ alone and run away from this danger. Your life is precious to God. God looked at you and decided to make your body his temple. And why would you want to destroy his temple? Why would you want to destroy your body and allow spirits of different kinds to gain access to your life? When they have access to your life, I'm telling you, it will be problems upon problems. You will not have the time to help yourself because they will do everything to keep you in bondage. Keep the temple of God clean. Run from this sin. If you are being told to run, it is for your good. It is for you to be free from unnecessary troubles. To be sincere with you, there is no such thing as a secret sin. The plan to cover this sin cannot prosper. You cannot hide this sin. God sees everything. Jeremiah 6, 17-18, KJV.
for mine eyes are upon all their ways. They are not hid from my face, neither is their iniquity hid from mine eyes. And first I will recompense their iniquity with their sin double, because they have defiled my land. They have filled mine inheritance with the carcasses of their detestable and abominable things. If you have been committing this sin before, it is time for you to confess. You need to let go of this sin. You need to let the skeleton in your cupboard be gone. If you want to be free of problems that are not yours, you need to confess your sins and let them go. You need to come back to Christ. You need to make the temple of God holy again. God wants to step into your life. Stop the sexual sin. 1 Corinthians 6.19 KJV What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? A man got married to a beautiful woman. They were both Christians. The marriage was going well. I mean, they had the marriage that people could only dream of. They had kids and there was love in that family. They were literally living the dream. The man was doing well. The woman was doing well, and the kids were doing well too. About 15 years into the marriage, a woman came into this man's house with some kids. She asked for this man from the wife, but he was not home. The strange woman insisted that she would wait till he was back. The wife did not understand what was going on, but she never expected what the outcome was. The man came back and was shocked when he saw this woman and her kids. It was at this time, the woman said the man was the father of the two kids she was with. The man's wife refused to believe this because the man had always been faithful. Unknown to the wife, her husband had been dating this woman for three years after they got married. The marriage ended that day and the man lost a lot. All the man wanted was his family back, but his sin of the past had caught up with him. There are no happy endings when adultery is involved. There are no happy endings when fornication is involved. There are no happy endings when sexual immorality is involved. Sexual immorality is a sin that we have been speaking against in the Church of Christ. The devil is bringing in lust in the hearts of the children of God and has been using it to destroy lives. This sin is something we must stand against as individuals in our own personal lives and as the body of Christ. You may be seeing people and be thinking they are not into sexual immorality, but the truth is that people are always hiding this. People who are married will not be committing sexual immorality openly because they will not want their partner to know they are cheating. People who are not married, people who are single, will be committing sexual immorality and they will hide it for so many different reasons. Probably because of shame, or they don't want to be judged or even rebuked by other brothers and sisters. Sexual immorality brings nothing but shame to people, and that's why it remains a secret sin. Sexual immorality is like a skeleton in the cupboard, something that one worships secretly. It will destroy life and will disgrace one's life. If you are engaging in any form of sexual immorality, fornication, adultery, masturbation, or whatever name they give to others, you need to run away from this sin. You need to make sure that it doesn't destroy you. It is not too late to run from it now. If we are saying you should not go into sexual immorality, it is not because someone does not want you to enjoy yourself. There is no enjoyment in sexual sin. It will only bring destruction. The devil is packaging it for the world today. He wants people to fall into this sin and let this sin enter into the Church of Christ. I will be sincere with you. This sin is in the church today. Church members are committing adultery with each other. The youth of the church are fornicating with one another and they are doing it secretly so that no one in the church will know. Are you one of these people? Are you allowing the sin of sexual immorality to eat at you? The consequences and punishment will never be in secret. This is why the title of the sermon is Skeletons in the Closet. The expression a skeleton in the closet refers to a secret source of shame potentially ruinous if exposed, which a person or family makes efforts to conceal. There is no better example of a person who had skeletons in his closet like David. 2 Samuel 11, 2-4 And it came to pass in an eventide, that David arose from off his bed, 
and walked upon the roof of the king's house, and from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent and inquired after the woman, and one said, Is not that Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messengers, and took her, and she came in unto him, and he lay with her, for she was purified for her uncleanliness, and she returned unto her house. We see here David had sexual relations with Bathsheba, a woman who was married to his stalwart officer Uriah the Hittite. After learning from Bathsheba she was pregnant, he tried to distort the ancestry of the child by luring Uriah into having a conjugal visit with Bathsheba. First, he asked Uriah to go home and so that he could have sex with her. However, plan A failed. Uriah wasn't going to go home while his men were fighting in the war. That was unfair. So, the next day, David tried plan B, which was to get Uriah drunk so that he went back to his house. But that failed too. After failing in his first plan, he committed manslaughter by issuing orders to his general, Joab, that Uriah's life and those of others be put at unnecessary risk. David thereby caused Uriah and others who fell that day to suffer an undignified death. The skeletons in David's closet led to another man's killing. The truth is, covering up our sin complicates our life more. This message is not to condemn you. It is to point you away from the direction of acquiring more hidden sins. You may have things you are hiding now, but if you don't have to continue adding things onto the list, you don't have to continue gathering skeletons to put in that closet. He experienced shame when he was being punished. We cannot stop preaching against sexual immorality in churches. We should never stop speaking against this because the devil is pushing this with the efforts to make people constantly fall into this sin. Sexual immorality is one of the hardest sins for some people to say no to. If you commit sexual immorality, you are not just destroying your spiritual life, but you are also destroying your life physically. Sexual immorality will deal with you spiritually and physically.